Hi everyone. In this video, you will learn how to set up our custom ProjectWise project creation automation tool. As you know, the setup for projects in ProjectWise have grown in complexity over time. Projects are now containers for multiple data types and structures, which include artifacts or links to other components. For example, work areas in ProjectWise design integration that can be linked to a connected project or ProjectWise deliverables management instances that can be leveraged from a ProjectWise design integration project. The setup of these functions, until now, have been manual configurations. This tool will aid users in the automation of these configuration steps. Let's begin with a high-level technical overview of this tool. We have delivered this ProjectWise project templating service as a product, and we've designed it for hosting. Uh, by uh, Bentley. So you can get the ProjectWise project templating service installed in your hosted environment by raising a service request with Mass. Um, I guess one of the key things that you'll need to provide to the, to the analyst is the particular data sources that you intend to serve. And the reason for that is that we um, maintain a uh, data source whitelist within the service so that so that the service can only um, work against data sources that you've identified to begin with. The easiest way to learn a web service is really to go to what's called the Swagger page, which is a uh, interactive, typically an interactive page that you can that you can use to uh, uh, to go to the web service and exercise it. And in this case, the um, uh, the Swagger page also has a bunch of example uh, uh, data that you can that you can include with it. So that's kind of a uh, example. Uh, uh, formats of the data package that needs to be passed into the into the web service. The next simplest way to learn to use a web service is to use PowerShell. And I've got some example, uh, got a, particularly an example of, of using that, which I think you will find instructive. Once you have the basics down, you should try, uh, I recommend trying Power Automate. It's something that Microsoft provides, and most of our users are using some of the Office 365 uh, products. And of course, Power Automate is an easy way to uh, start automating things like SharePoint, uh, because you can respond to events in SharePoint pretty easily. Um, and uh, and of course Exchange or Outlook, whatever they call it. The um, so I'm going to show you a couple of SharePoint related flows just to demonstrate using Power Automate with this web service. The uh, so web services generally are great for backend communications. The um, Kind of the, uh, I would say the premier use case is really when we're talking about project provisioning is to be able to respond to a help ticket raised in a ticketing system that where, uh, you know, administrators set up the ability to kind of auto provision projects based on help t tickets raised in a ticketing system. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of other, uh, examples too, as well as, I mean, you could hook it up to an accounting system in some way. I mean, we're particularly talking about projects, but we also expose a lot of uh, other capability dealing with other objects, obviously uh, documents in the, in the web service. So, so I think you'll find some of that stuff useful. Um, the, I guess the other thing that people have shown a lot of interest in is synchronizing with SharePoint. And obviously a lot of accounts use SharePoint for just about anything. 
particularly keeping lists and keeping track of uh, you know tasks that are that are in progress. And so that is something where people have have expressed a lot of interest in synchronizing SharePoint with uh, ProjectWise. Um, some cases, and I actually ran into this uh, just this week, you had a user that was really more interested in running a schedule task. Now you could do that with the web services, but it would kind of be overkill for, for that. I mean, it's probably easier to use PowerShell for a schedule task. Um, I mean, it's you can accomplish exactly the same thing, but you've got a little more, I don't know that you've got more control, but you could, um, but there's really no need to um, to go up and connect to a web service in order to uh, execute logic against a scheduled task. A particular scheduled task we were talking about was you know being able to query a query a uh, data table, and then in this case they were looking at I think both uh, project property updates as well as uh, project creation. And so in that case, just uh, regular PowerShell is probably fine for that particular scenario because it's not really involving another system that would be sending messages across the web. Um, I recommend using a non-federated account with an email and password. The I do have support for logical accounts in there now, uh, which is something I just recently added. And the... Um, um, the, the reason I recommend the IMS account is because if you have an IMS account, then you can manipulate the web artifacts, you know, creating your connected projects, doing your work area connections, all that kind of stuff. The, um, I've included a utility, um, a utility command line in PowerShell called convert to encoded token which is, this is how you would encode the cred credentials in order to pass them through, through the web service. So the first thing I said was that the easiest way to learn to use web services is via the Swagger page. And most, um, uh, most web, web services will provide a user interface like this uh, in order to uh, kind of access the functionality. And if we go down just briefly, let me, hopefully I don't make this too small to see, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a trade-off. You can see that I've built into this uh, getting configuration information from your data source. Uh, so here's getting workflows, here's getting workflow states. Here is getting environments, here's getting environment attributes, and here's getting storage areas. So anyway, these are kind of the basic information that uh, seemed to me would be useful for users to be able to get to from a, uh, from a web service. Uh, same thing with connected projects, and really, as you can imagine, uh, using these for connected projects just means that it's only connected projects and it's not uh, project-wise DI uh, rich projects. I've got a bunch of document search things that we've been working on and the, um, you know, probably the most useful is the ability to go and just kind of do these ad hoc searches like you can do in PowerShell and then return the, return the documents. The, um, the documents in particular, we've got the ability to up, update document attributes or this one's update document attributes. This is just to get uh, fully populated uh, document attributes from the search. Uh, here we can do a document attribute update. Here we can do a copy. The um, and this will actually support doing a copy between data sources. You can you can do it within a data source, but we support the ability to, to go from a uh, uh, source data source to a target data source. So obviously something that you might very well want to um, 
uh, want to execute in kind of a, a uh, you know, an enterprise uh, type workflow. You've got the document create, setting of the document final status, creating the document placeholders here. This is all about creating abstract documents with, um, with uh, document codes. Got the ability to set a document state, to version a document, to obviously download the document, and then to replace the file for a document. So you could see that you might go and create a document here, and then later want to replace the file. So you can do that in all of the other web services. Um, not going to do everything, but I've got a get folder exists. And then down here, we've got the uh, project stuff that we're going to that we're going to talk about. The uh, particular one that we're going to call is the um, is the uh, uh, project async, which basically means we send a request to ProjectWise to create the project. And once the project is created, we want the we want the service to notify us that this has been done. Uh, so we'll come back and do that. We got this uh, create project audit trail report, which people have found useful, whereby you kind of give the um, you can uh, essentially you can give the uh, web service a time frame. And it will go out and do an audit trail report against your project within that time frame, and it'll write the audit trail, write this report back into ProjectWise uh, underneath the project. Uh, here's creating a project which is not asynchronous, which sometimes people need when they basically need to wait for the whole process to uh, to continue before they uh, proceed. Here we've got the project properties update that we were talking about previously. Here's some kind of basic form stuff. And then this one also turns out to be important, the ability to get uh, templates from your data source of the different project types that you can use. We've also got the ability to kick off renditions, get rendition profiles, and we've got some basic uh, user type of, uh, type of ability here. The, let me go back and just show you these really simple ones. So we're going to go here first to just get the workflows to just give you an example of what the what the web service looks like. And we're going to get the workflows, and I'm going to the first thing I need to do is to go and tell it which data source I want to uh, I want to get the workflows from. So in this case, I'm going to use my decide data source, and then my header author authorization, which is going to be this. And in this case, I'm using what's called basic authorization. And then that encoded um, username password, like I was telling you about. Um, it could be logical, and uh, but in my scenario, I'm using uh, IMS non-federated credentials. And here you can see I've got down here a listing of all the uh, workflows in that particular data source. Um, yeah, so let's just go and get the environments. So again, I'm going to hit the Try It Out button. And as you can see, this is a really useful way to um, you know, to get the to get a feel for using the web service. So in all these things, you can also, I mean, your particular your web developers can, um, you know, can pass all this stuff in code without too much difficulty. So we're going to do that. We're going to execute that, and this should come back with a list of environments. And here you can see all the environments we've got in that particular data source. All right, so let's cruise down here a little bit. Storage areas always end up being important. 
Now, for this particular data source, it's not that important because there's only one, but uh, still. And here you can see I've just got that one storage area storage. So all this stuff is things that is the kind of things that your web developers will be able to consume. But I mean, I think as administrators, you guys are going to need to be the ones that kind of come up with the various use cases of the, of the things that you want to automate. So let's go down here and we're going to do a uh, asynchronous creation of a project. So in this case, we're actually formatting a, um, a big packet of data to send through to the web service to, to get it to do the things we want it to do. So a couple of things. Let's go and similarly, we've got to fill in the authorization. You can see I already have it defaulting to the data source that I want to work on. I've got it set up so that it's actually going to create a project that I know is is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be unique. Uh, there's the template name I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to copy one folder level. You can see I've got the storage area set to storage. Uh, I don't think we need to do the geospatial stuff. Um, and I think most of the rest of this is fine. When I pass in a WSG URL, it knows to go and create the work area connection, kind of that, uh, kind of that loop back that we, um, Trying to get emails to build, but we haven't been successful yet. We'll put him down here as an owner as well. So you can see all of this is pretty now the it's fairly particular in the way that the uh, that this um, data is formatted. So I mean, it is important that uh, that you follow these examples that are in here. I mean, it's not critical. It'll just it'll just fail until you uh, send it data that it that it likes. So that's uh, you know this and this user obviously has to have uh, project create. Uh, he also needs to have project delete rights as well because of the way that we end up uh, creating the project and then moving it. So that's that is an important thing to be to have for that user. So then, so we're going to hit this button, and basically all we're doing is submitting a request to ProjectWise to go and create this uh, to go and create this project. And so we see here that the request was submitted okay, and one of the things that I've done here, as you'll notice, I've got this um, SMS response number. And the um, and so what this will actually do is send me a text when the when the project has been created, which you'll probably be able to hear. I don't know if you just heard that, but I just got got the text that said that it that my project had been created, and I've also got an email. I'll show you in a minute. So I just got this email as well, 
And so I'm going to go and click on this link to get to my project. It's going to open up project wise and take me here to this, uh, to this. I've got the other links, but I could just go and it should get me to it. I say open a connected project. It's going to get me here. Logged in as this guy, and you can see that I've added Bill as a team member. I've also got my uh, connections created. So if I click on here, you can see I've got my, my folders all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I've got a really a full fledged created, created project here, just based on that, based on that one call. And of course the idea is again, you would have another system probably sending that, uh, sending that request to project wise to uh, create the project. So let's look at some PowerShell that'll do essentially the same thing. Okay, so we've actually got a bunch of tools in PowerShell that allow you to get uh, various different kinds of tokens. The uh, particular one I'm gonna use right here is the basic, just because that's easiest to do. We also support using a uh, token that you can get from, um, from your connection client. And of course that would be in an interactive, um, you know, that would be in an interactive session that you're doing, doing in PowerShell where you've got your connection client running. So you can go and, and query the connection client for a token to uh, pass. In that case, you would prefix the token with token. The, uh, in this case, we're just using the basic authentication. And here you can see where I've got my, um, my uh, URL set, where I'm uh, calling it against this server. And this is the one I've been using today. And you will have a similar kind of address when you go to uh, deploy this, uh, uh, when you get managed services to deploy it for you. So we're gonna, first we're gonna do just a couple of things. Let's see, I guess that's fine. Uh, First thing we're going to do is just like we did in the Swagger page, we're going to go ahead and get the workflows for this data source. And you'll notice that the data source needs to be uh, needs to be encoded. And actually, if we go back to the um, if we go back to the Swagger page, you'll see where this happened. So you'll see here the the kind of a neat thing about the neat thing about Swagger is it shows you a couple of different ways in which you can actually invoke the uh, the logic of the web service. And in this case, it's showing you how to use curl. And curl is a very very lightweight um, utility that allows you to exercise web services. And it's really just a command line a, a uh, command line tool that allows you to send along send along data. Uh, to a web service address and, and get results. And so in this case, you can see that when we pass the data source, and uh, just for reference, I always use the fully qualified domain name of the uh, server, as well as the actual uh, uh, project-wise data source name, as opposed to the display name. And you'll see that the colon gets encoded as this percent three A. And so that's what we will see back over here in PowerShell. 
you see, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just going to call the uh, workflows and see what we get back. I think all this stuff is fine. And you'll see that I've got a uh, 497 byte response. And so if I go here, and you'll notice that I put it in this variable called resp test. I'm going to go here, yes, test. And here, here you can see I've got this list of uh, list of workflows down here. Um, a couple things to keep in mind when you're working with PowerShell. A lot of times PowerShell um, re actually returns you an array. It treats it as if it's a, a single variable, but it's actually an array. So we could actually go and within rest test and we can tell that because we've got count um, and count you know is one of the key things that you get in an array and then we can dereference the array just like you would any array like that with square brackets and we see that we just get the we just get the one workflow the um, let's go down here a little bit so then the next thing that we want to do is to go and create our project and again, we're going to do it asynchronously. And we are going to um, let's see what did I do? Did change that to token. This will work. Okay. The um, so we're going to call this endpoint the create uh, projects endpoint, project async. We're going to use this data source name, and we are going to pass it in this big package of data that you, that you see down here. This might be a little bit easier to read than the, um, you know, than what than what we were showing on the on the Swagger page there. The um, so a couple of things to point out here. Notice that I'm setting some project properties here, trivial ones, but project properties nonetheless. Um, I've got my uh, template, which is required. I've got my data source name and my project name and my parent path and template name, all of which is required as is the storage area. And then, so what we're gonna, end up doing then is so I've added these guys as owner emails and then a notify emails down here with um make sure it's spelled Bill's name right so all that stuff should work okay the um the thing that you need to know from PowerShell is the ability to use this convert to JSON and when we do that I'll show you the results of that. So that is our, that's the URL we want to call. This is basically the data that we want to send. Tell you what, I'll go ahead and do it and then I'll show you what that data looks like. And so that came back with a response that should just say, um, request submitted okay. And then the um, packet of data that we sent is this um, is this body create, which is very similar to the um, as you can see is very similar to the data that we uh, generated on the web page. I don't know if you just heard my uh, phone beep where I got the uh, text message, and then. And that again, so it was basically the same thing that we just did via the um, uh, Swagger page. We just did that same thing via PowerShell. Same deal.
blindingly fast, right? So there you go. Um, the okay, so let's go to that. So we just did so we just did PowerShell where you can kind of see the guts of the things that we need to we need to pass on to this. Uh, uh, we call the we call the various uh, exposed bits of logic, we call them endpoints you know, within a web service. Let's go now and look at, um, have to look into this. Uh, what I want to go show you next is Power Automate. So let's go look at Power Automate. And what I've got in here is I've got a couple of different, um, a couple of different, sorry about my train. Is a couple of different uh, Power Automate flows. And just to get away from projects for a minute, let's go and look at how would we send a file automatically from SharePoint to ProjectWise. So we're going to go here. I'm going to edit this, um, edit this flow so you can see what's going on. So we're saying that when a file is created in a folder, and this is a particular uh, SharePoint site that I've got, and it's a particular uh, shared documents folder within that SharePoint site. And you can see I've got a whole list over here of ones that I could be using, but that's the one I want. The um, there's a particular uh, bit of processing that has to happen in your flow in order to actually retrieve the file content. We do some things where we have to kind of break down that content in a way so that, that we can pass it to the uh, to the web service. And then here you've got the um, and here you can see I'm doing essentially the same thing we were just doing over there in. Uh, PowerShell, except in this case, I'm, I'm um, using the document create endpoint in order to upload that, um, that document to, uh, to ProjectWise. A, a couple of, this takes a little bit of work to get it uh, formatted properly. And if you have seen my uh, LinkedIn post about doing this, I've got some links in there to uh, uh, exported flows that you can that you can import and then and mess with in order to get, get them working. The uh, so what we're expecting here then when this uh, flow runs is that it we should see it run. You'd see I just. Uh, Ran it about an hour ago. Let's try it again. So I'm going to go back to my um, so get back to SharePoint. So here we go. So here is this Council of Elrond um, Microsoft Flow document library. And so I'm going to go and just copy in a document. Copy in a document from here from my documents. So of course that pretty it's a small file pretty quickly uploads and so now let's go back to our power automate and look and see what happened didn't run yet And it takes it a um, kind of takes it a minute to um, for Microsoft to recognize something has happened and to call the uh, and you can see there we're running the small file. It should actually succeed pretty quickly. And there you can see that it that it succeeded 11 seconds ago. And we can actually go over here if you um, if you noticed
when I put this file over into um, ProjectWise, I, I specify the uh, folder that I want to that I want to send it to. And as you see on the Swagger page, I've got a couple of different macros that you can that you can use, but to, and I think they're particularly useful for specifying um, unique file names and unique folder names. So in this case, I want to put it in a folder called SharePoint Files with the date and then just our, a random um, uh, subfolder. So I don't overwrite anything. So this, this allows me to just keep putting data up there and not worry about uh, duplicating file names. So let's go back to project-wise. I'm going to go here to SharePoint files. You see we're St. Patrick's Day, 317. Not sure which is the one we just did. So I think it's this guy. There we go. So that was that was the little file that I just put into SharePoint and it's made it all the way to ProjectWise with with uh, basically with no manual intervention. Let's go and do the same thing with a um, with a SharePoint list and get it to go and create us a corresponding um, project-wise project. So again, we've got in here when my SharePoint site and I've got a list called projects. And so when an item is created, I wanted to call my web service, pass in the appropriate data and create, and you, re, you probably recognize this format um, at this point. And the, um, and the, um, and the idea is that when we obviously we add an, an item to this list, we want it to go and uh, create the project. This one takes a little bit longer to fire. So we will, um, I suspect it will be a minute or so once we add the, once we add the project. But let's go back here. So this was my, it's my same SharePoint site. And this is my, uh, projects list. So this is, you know, a very common construct within SharePoint. This idea that you're going to go and create a um, uh, an item in a list. But the, the cool thing about it is, of course, is that you set up the list with with the appropriate data, and then people basically get a form to fill in the list, right? And so we will call this. Coffee corner. All right. That's fine. We'll use a different um, template to building. It's fine. We're gonna, uh, gonna fill any of that stuff in. This is fine. SharePoint projects is gonna create uh, use my date macro to um, to do that. I've got various um, data sources that I can that I can use to um, to fill this in, but in this case, I'm just going to use the uh, same one we've been using. The uh, folder depth. Let's go ahead and just get one, and then there's the three mouse. So that should be good. So we're just going to add that um, item to our list. And then what we're going to expect is that eventually our uh, Power Automate flow is going to fire. So this is always fun, just waiting for the for the flow to fire.
There we go. And so that's it. it succeeded. Should get text. And, and, uh, but here you can see that my flow ran successfully. Now I can go back over to um, should have out oh, there the text just came in. I probably heard that beep. And then we should have, and I also just got the email. So again, we'll go and navigate to the uh, project. And notice that, see, we use this different uh, work area type building. And then we filled in some of the project properties. The, um, and then just to show everything else, we're going to go here and open the connected project. And we've added Bill. I don't know that one respond so much more quickly, but I guess it's warmed up. Um, okay, so that is that is it. So this is something you can get um, managed services to deploy for you. I did, we'll go and look at, and I guess, Bill, we can go answer some of the questions now. First question, okay. uh, is this only available for Bentley hosted project wise? Well, we, we designed it for, we designed it for Bentley hosted, but the idea was really to, um, you know, make this more of a SaaS offering. So we really designed it specifically for managed services, but there, there's certainly opportunities if, if somebody really needs it locally. Okay, second question, is this for ProjectWise power users or other types of uh, colleagues? Well, I think as you probably saw the, um, you know, you would really need to be a, a web developer of some kind in order to uh, use this. I mean, a ProjectWise administrator, like I was saying, a ProjectWise administrator probably knows what he wants or he or she wants to get uh, automated. Um, you know, adding a project in SAP, I mean, say whatever, uh, the idea being that, uh, at that point, the administrator would like to not have to do all this manual work to, uh, um, you know, create a project. So that's, that's kind of the idea here is that, uh, the administrator would add, probably ask his IT folks to, uh, to hook up the web service to some other backend system. Okay, next question. Can this not be done while being federated? The, uh, you can use a logical account. The, uh, obviously you can't do the web things with a, uh, you know, without an IMS account of some kind, but, uh, Certainly, you can do basic project creation and things like that with just the uh, with just a logical account. The um, I mean, it seems most logical to me that people are gonna you know that people would use a web service to create web artifacts. But if you're just trying to do some basic automation, you could just use a logical account. Okay. Next question: How can I get access to the Swagger page? You can get access to the Swagger page. The um, the easiest way to do it is to is to get uh, managed services to uh, to deploy it for you, and then they'll they'll give you the address to your Swagger page. Okay. Next question. This seems okay. awfully complicated. Is this just the under hood tools, or is there a final interface that is more user friendly? I guess you would say this is the underhood tools. With no final interface coming, this is essentially the interface. Yes, 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 it is. And the um, and the point of it is again to kind of hook it up to other backend systems, such that and this is a very common this is a very common model across enterprise systems. The ability to have web services 
in the background that allow these enterprise systems to communicate. So that's really what we're trying to get at here. Okay, next question. What specifically are we to ask MAS to set up for us, i.e., what is it officially called? But it's called the uh, ProjectWise Project Templating Service. Next question, uh, are these flows documented or, or available as working examples to assist in building our own? Uh, yeah, they are. If you've seen my, I did a pretty lengthy post on LinkedIn about uh, building these uh, Power Automate uh, Power Automate flows, and within those, I've got I've got links to the exported flows that people can use to kind of build their own. Um, next question: Is it possible to sync the access list from SharePoint to the project in ProjectWise? Um, I've exposed some functionality in the user's endpoint. Whether or not we could specifically do that, I don't know. I've never tried that. Okay. Um, next question. Is there a way to create a storage area and work project when creating the new projects? I have not. I have not exposed an endpoint for creating a new storage area. And I don't think we will be doing that. Okay. Uh, is it possible to use this API to trigger some project-wise batch process like ID, GN, file generation? Uh, I have not done it for ID, GN file generation. I have done it, um, obviously you've got that uh, rendition endpoint in there. So that's kind of the idea. Okay, and good timing. Last question. How do you generate your basic authorization key? Again, that was in the slides and we've got a, um, um, if you're using the basic, you can just use that convert to encoded token um, commandlet that's in PowerShell. And the, um, um, and you basically would just use the username, colon, password, and then you and then you encode it with that uh, with that uh, commandlet, and it precede it. Uh, you're gonna precede it with basic, basic space, and then that token. Okay. And just as I think about this, this will be a recording which has the slides presented in it. So I don't know if you necessarily need the slide deck. You just watch okay. the recording to get the slides. Um, we'll slide in one more question that came in. We have a Microsoft form for project managers to fill out to create projects in ProjectWise. Have you looked into using a form to pass variables through API? Yep, yep, that that all that all works just fine. The, um, I mean, and you can kind of use that share, I mean, creating a, an item in a SharePoint list is the same, you know, is basically the same operation. And you can just pass the uh, you can just pass the parameters through to the to the endpoint. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation on our project creation automation tool. If you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to your Bentley account representative.